he get here? Not the point. Why is he here? Oh, you know this man? Whenever my father spots a promising opponent, he invites them to Sun Perch to duel. Pressing duties or no, he can't resist a good fight. So the one Estinian is crossing blades with. Save my darling daughter. Know that you are the strongest I fought in many a moon, if not longer. It is the privilege of a lifelong lived to face such a formidable soul. <laughs> If it's formidable you want, then look no further than that woman there. Hmm. I see you, warrior. We had no idea you meant to visit Tural. I've seen what lies east. This time I chose west. And thus did our itinerant dragoon make his travel plans. You witnessed our bout. If you thought he was fearsome, that was with one head dozing. I'm not sure I understand. The old man has been feeling his ears. The uncovered side is the head of resolve, and age has only deepened his love for combat. But the head of reason, wiser of the two, sleeps more and more these days. As I understand it, the veil helps with the restoration of his magical energies. Enough about me, Lamati. I want to hear of your adventures. Lamachi? A term of endearment. It's what my family calls me. have since grown accustomed to it. Hmm. then. And these others, I assume, are Lamati's recruited allies. Ha! All tempered steel. Yet as much as I enjoy testing their metal, the hour of the right is at hand. I will summon the other claimants at once. Then I shall leave you to it. Good fortune, my friends.
the Clayman saw a sample. The first promise, Zorolja. The second promise, Ona. The third promise, Uglamat. And lastly, the chosen of Mamuk, Bakun Chacha. You four will compete in the rite of succession, the outcome of which will decide who takes my place as Dawn Serpent. I am not the man I once was. My wiser half sleeps the days away. And it is time I yield my position. But mine is a torch that has never been passed. Tuliola is young. And so I look to the always for inspiration. The right of succession. The means by which the Autarch of Mamuk was chosen. Only the two headed were deemed fit for this contest. But the Tuliola I built is a nation of many peoples. Our leader needn't have two heads, nor be a Mamuja at all. So I gave the right of claimant, not only to the son I sired, but to my adopted children as well. Yet the opportunity to rule was still not equal. That is why a recent tournament offered a place in the contest as the winning prize. <laughs> Now you have us to compete against. Oh, though it seems the one head was already too afraid to face us in the tournament. <laughs> Our brother was in shock to Rol leading the Landsguard on a campaign to eradicate a Tural Vidral. Anyone with sense would know he was too busy for games. Now for the part you've been waiting to hear. The nature of the contest itself. To triumph in the right of succession, and thereby claim our nation's throne, you must travel the lands of Yocturol. And find the city of gold. If I may, Father. Speak, Gorna. The Golden City is an ancient Turali legend, but after so many failed attempts to find it, the story has become more fairy tale than fact. If you would charge us with such a quest, are we then to assume you have proof of the city's existence? Are you for us proof, my unbroken word? For I have seen it with my own four eyes. The city's real. All those years. This was before the founding of Tuliolo. I traveled the lands of Toral with my companions. And we ended our journey at the gates to the Golden City. 
I mean to have you do the same. But in order to achieve victory proper, you need to break the seal I put in place. Bring them. You will retrace the path I walked to unite our peoples step by step. Along the way, seven chosen electors will be waiting to measure your worth. Earn their keystones by performing the feats they ask of you. Once you've fitted each of the seven tablets with the keystone, you'll have the key to unlock the seal on the Golden City's gates. So the contest is in stages, none of which can be skipped by rushing to the ultimate objective. Exactly. Exciting, isn't it? Martial tournaments, hunting festivals, and now this? You do so love your contests, Papa. <laughs> Were I a few years younger, I would have joined in myself, giving you a proper challenge. You may think the ride is tedious or nonsensical, or both. I am yielding our nation's throne. Let me have this final indulgence. Tch, a waste of time. Just name Bakunja just assessor and be done with it. The rite of cessation begins now. I'll be watching you progress with great interest. And Clement, remember to collect your tablets before you leave. You are one of Lamachi's allies. Speak freely. I am Cryo Baldessian, representative of the students of Baldessian. My name is perhaps familiar to you? Ah. It would seem you sent this letter to my order some years ago. The ink has since faded and much of the writing is illegible. Even so, we managed to determine the essence of it. A request to investigate the Golden City. Addressed to my grandfather, Galuf. Included with the correspondence was this earring. A fairy tale and a piece of jewelry were enough to convince my grandfather to sail halfway across the world. So there is surely some greater mystery at work here. On behalf of the students, I've come to seek clarification on the matter. Have you any knowledge you might share with me? Huh. 
<laughs> no, not at this time. I have tasked the claimants with finding the Golden City. To fulfill your request, would afford one of them an unfair advantage in the right of succession. But once the contest is decided, I plan to entrust the entire truth to my successor. If you want to hear it, then you have best helped Lamachi win. Very well, Dawn Servant. On my honor as a student of Baldessian, I will find your golden city. Thank you for hearing my petition. She's grown into a remarkable young woman. You should be proud, Galov. Too late to change your mind now, I suppose. But are you sure you wish to be part of this? Our third promise is not one to take no for an answer. Though you may have agreed to help, I worry that you were swept up in her relentless enthusiasm. Or perhaps you've been lured by the glory of the Golden City. Either way, this contest for the throne will place you and yours at the heart of political turmoil. If you are second-guessing your decision, tell me now. This may be my last chance to help you withdraw. Life is a series of journeys, my friend. And there's no telling what awaits us on the long road. But what's important is to be true to yourself as you walk it. Only then can we hope to be content when we arrive at the end of one and step forward into another. So you are committed to your path. I will speak no more of it then. As for my own involvement, I can no longer conduct myself as a mere guide, I think. Not after the dawn servant's revelation. Take. There goes Tuliola's mightiest warrior! First promise, our village needs aid. The cold weather stunts our crops, and the children of our village go hungry. Once you ascend the throne, I beg of you, grant my people new lands, please! Sir Elja. Take heart, tiller of the soil. The Resilion son, blood heir to the dawn servant, has heard your pleas. Soralcha, 
the first promise and commander of the Landscap. Sereltia, the palace seer. As he was so careful to remind the crowd, Soraltja is indeed the natural child of Guru Jaja. And resilient son. Is that another title, like the first promise? After a fashion, common knowledge has it that two-headed Mamulja cannot sire children. Yet Soraltja was born all the same, with the head of resolved features and the head of recent scales. An extraordinary example of life's unyielding and resilience. And a warrior's reticence. He says little, but the way he moves... I know a hardened soldier when I see one. He's a natural swordsman. A gift he inherited from his father. Some even say that the son has already surpassed the sire. Should he come to power, the first promise means to employ that martial prowess in the conquest of foreign lands. For this, he and his supporters have been labelled expansionists. This puts him in direct opposition to Wuklamat, who advocates for the preservation of peace. You may recall that she spoke of a claimant who cannot be allowed to rule. That is Oraltia, the warmonger. Prion, are you all right? The echo... It gave me a glimpse into Zoraljar's ambitions. Deep and unknowable, like an abyss. Yet at the same time, a roaring, unquenchable fire. It was a trifle terrifying, to be frank. You must bring us more marvelous conveniences, more dirigibles and trains and the like. We need you in charge to make trading easier. The elders, they complain and complain about abandoning tradition. But we're not like them, afraid of everything foreign and new. You have our wholehearted support. With your ingenuity and knowledge, you're sure to win the contest. Forgive me, but the right of succession is barely begun. I will hear your petitions if and when I am named Don Servant. If you will excuse me. Plain spoken, as always. <laughs> oh, that's a corner. Practical to a fault. Here we have Kona. The second promise, who spent time as a pupil at Charlian's own studium. Now that you mention it, I think I did see him in the halls once or twice. There was nothing to suggest he was Turali, much less from a royal family. That was by design. He forwent his usual garb and took an Eorsian name to avoid attention. So it was Kona who introduced the dirigibles. And the railway too, given what we just heard. In furtherance of his goal, to enrich Tuliolal with every bright notion he learned of in Sharlia. He is the hope of those who prize innovation. As aloof as he may seem, Kona and Wuklamat actually get along rather well. They bicker and banter, as only close siblings do. of you all to cheer the lesser claimants. Oh, come now. 
What are you afraid of? I'm no different from your dawn servant. That my kind should reign is Mamulja tradition, and has been so since before there was a Tuliola. I'll brush aside your feeble contenders, and then you'll see who deserves your fealty. <laughs> <laughs> well said, brother. The Mamulja have finally found peace in Tuliolal. Ah, a pity those fanatics are intent on keeping that tradition alive. The Chosen of Mamuk, Bakul Jacha, winner of the recent martial tournament. And the only claimant not of the Dawn's promise. His strength is undeniable. But... You see how he is. A few devoted Mamulja are his only supporters. What would he do with the throne should he win it? His policies and so forth. I doubt he's thought much beyond winning the contest itself. But one thing seems certain. If he does become Dawn Servant, he will see the Mamulja exalted as the ruling class, and all others forced into subservience. Sounds like another that cannot be allowed to rule. We wish for one thing and one thing only, Third Promise. To abide together in harmony with our neighbors whom we love in this land we share. It is our way, the Turoli way. Galul Jaja built for us this peaceful nation, and we beg you to preserve it. You have my word. I won't let your pleas go unanswered. Until Tuliolal was founded some 80 years ago, this continent was ravaged by war. The eldest among us remember that dark era, and they are Wuklamat's most ardent supporters. Apologies, it's hard to get away. This is Namika, my childhood nursemaid. She's been like a mother to me my whole life. I told her it wasn't necessary, but she insisted on seeing us off. I place our precious third promise into your care. Did you know Wuklamat was taking part in the Rite of Succession? Of the Dawn's promise? I thought it was only Zoralja and Kona. If she has any accomplishments to her name, I've yet to hear them. Compared to the two Mamulja, she pales in martial prowess. And then there's Kona who's far and away the most educated of the bunch. I hate to say it, but it's hardly a competition. It's fine. More than anyone, I understand how much better my brothers are than me. Better? Wook Lamart. I have never thought of you as the lesser sibling. Your brothers may excel in their respective ways, but you boast qualities that both lack. A strength that is yours alone. Having cared for you for so long, I should know. Thank you, Namika. Well, we ought to be on our way. Yes, hurry along. 
I await word of your victory with bated breath.
Cosa Mauka, the land of rainbow terraces. It commands the gaze of all who visit without fail. The many-colored marvel. An endless torrent of water cascades over sheer cliffs to shape the wetlands below. To its relentless flow, all life must yield. Together with Wuklamat, we proceeded along the marshy trail, a road upon which the Dawn Servant and his comrades once traveled. the weight of that water. The Isle of Han was impressive, but as you can see, Tulihyola does not want for natural wonders. The ground is swampy, so watch your step. You wouldn't want to fall into a bog. I won't. I told you I've been here before. Come on, Okanu isn't much farther.
No sign of Zorolja or that oversized lout. How much easier it would be if Zorolja were to fail here. But that isn't likely to happen. Honored guests, I am Zanuhali, elder of the Hanu. I am also an elector, charged with judging which among you is worthy of ascending the throne. Without further ado, let us talk of the feat. Not so fast. Surely you couldn't begin without us. Eh, you made it after all. No need to fuss. There is no time limit for this challenge. Now, if you would allow me to proceed... It is here, in Okanu, where my people forged a bond with the Dawn Servant during our own chapter of the Tuli Yolal Saga. In homage to those events, I have prepared for you the Feet of Reeds. Reeds seem to be of great importance to the Hanu. I wonder what this feat entails. We use reeds in every part of our lives, be it as food or weaving material. But look around the nearby paddies, and you will see that this season, our crops are failing. How fortunate, then, that my appointment to Elector coincided with this predicament. For surely, those who aspire to be Dawn Servant would find the matter of an ailing harvest a mere trifle to resolve. Aye, well, it is indeed the duty of a ruler to address the people's woes. <laughs> exactly, exactly! Do well in this, and you will earn my keystone. Why bother mucking about in the mud, when we can take the stone by force? Oh, mercy me! You are a hot-headed fellow, Bakul Jaja. Some electors may enjoy going toe-to-toe -to -toe with scrappers like you, but I refuse to entertain your base instincts. Arrangements have been made. Should you attempt to engage a feat giver in combat without their consent, word of your immediate disqualification will be sent to the palace. If you're still feeling feisty, then by all means, draw your weapon. <laughs> this contest is presided over by cowards. There's no sport in fighting you. Then we can return to the business of earning my keystone. The feat of reeds is begun. Claimants, I wish you the best of luck. Huh. The clever kitty crossed the seas to study foreign novelties. He might know tricks we don't. Tricks we can use. What of Little Miss Mittens? <laughs> you know the answer to that. Compared to the first and second promise, she's a distant third. Not even in the running. 
Then we see eye to eye on this brother. Being Bakul Jaja so long with me has rubbed off on you. <laughs> These allies of hers, though, they might be a problem. Damn it! I'm just as qualified to be here as they are. I'll show them. Easy now. There's no time limit, remember? Let's keep calm and think things through. Right. You're right. I won't win against that lumbering vidrol by losing my head.
Hmm? What do you want with me? Right. A greeting. Good. You brought your manners with you. When in Okano, do as the Hanu do. For a country as diverse as ours, the preservation of harmony demands that we respect the cultures of all peoples who call it home. Well, that explains your familiarity with Hanu customs. And you speak truth, of course. To live together means to learn about each other. Ah, I appreciate an open mind. In fact, I get the sense we've met before. You! You're Wu Kramat! Oh, what an unexpected honor for old Wukavu. Here I am prattling on about manners, and I've gone and insulted the third promise herself. There is no excuse for this betrayal of etiquette. Please, take up your axe and claim my impudent head! I will not. Keep your head. I hate formalities anyway, so forget about it, all right? All right then, consider it forgotten. How... prompt. We're actually here about the Ihihana float. It's in bad shape and we need you to craft new carrying poles and a new eye. I'm told you work with Uyuipo wood and a certain kind of stone? Uh, Abokisha? That I do. But while I would like nothing more than to offer my services, I just used the last I had of both those materials. My lumber in particular went to fixing homes damaged by the recent storm. I'll need ten days or so to restock. We can't wait that long. If you tell me where to go, I'll gather them myself. What? Send the third promise out on an errand like some common lackey? That's utterly unconscionable! A gross violation of social protocol! I told you not to worry about such things! Alright then, I shan't worry a whit. What's with your Hanu friend there? I am festival leader this season, and have come along to oversee the float's repair. As strange as it may sound, Wuk Lamat and her friends believe the float is an arcane focus, meant to encourage the growth of our struggling reeds. Hmm. Too many Hanu have forgotten, it seems. But... That is indeed the true purpose of the lifting of wings. Your education is impressive, Third Promise. Well, maybe a little. Allow me to show you where to procure Uyuipo. We can leave the Abokisha to your friends, I presume? Take yourself to Cave Kikitola, or thereabouts, and you should find the stones you need. I've been there once or twice. I can guide you. 
That should save us some time. All right, then. Let's get moving. Chosen one, one of your rivals is making progress. Ah, Ihiana, you say? <laughs> Should our first choice fail to deliver, it might be wise to let this play out. <laughs> <laughs> the third-rate promise is making herself useful after all.
Not sure we heard you right, old man. Why don't you say that again? As many times as you'd like. The Third Promise tasked me with repairing this float, and I'll not relinquish it to an uncultured brute like you. Much less one that can't even manage a simple greeting. We wanted to handle this in a civilized way, but we're more than willing to <laughs> kill you. We have a two-headed problem. Yes, please hurry. She's on her way back already? Stand back, Wukevu! I will protect the float! <laughs> Are you trying to be brave, little bird? I could never have repaired the float alone. Not properly. But thanks to Wuklamat and her friends, we can hold Ihihana again! This is a priceless treasure! And as festival leader, I would die to protect it! Uh, very well. If that's what you want. I put everything into that blow. Good. The better for you to understand the gulf between us. But you need more lessons. We'll carve them into your mangy hide until you cry and beg forgiveness. Your brilliant plan was to steal the float and take the credit. The so-called blessed siblings are nothing but cheats. <laughs> Your scorn is sweet music. Come, weaklings. We'll crush you each in turn. Or all together, if you like. Calm yourself, Chosen One. If you fight in earnest, this will end in a massacre. What's more, we have word that our other prospect is on the verge of success. Hmm. Then it would be foolish to expand effort, sweating nuts. <laughs> Lucky for you. Eh. Ugh, two heads. I see my mook still clings to that loathsome hope. Us, third promise. You're not dying, are you? <laughs> It'll take more than that to kill me. So, are we having this festival or not? Yes! Yes, we are!
So few have come. Patience. Once Ihihana gets underway, no Hanu will be able to resist joining in. Just so. Ukewu knows well the heart of the Hanu. Have faith, Third Promise, and climb aboard the float. It is time for the lifting of wings. Off we go! Ikihana is a prayer for bountiful harvest. But this is not its only meaning. It is also an exchange of pledges between rider and bearers. A commitment to a long and fruitful friendship. Listen well, friends! The personage we bear today is Wuklamat, the savior of our beloved festival! Let your shoulders burn or your feathers fall out, but do not even think of dropping her! Ready and... <laughs> I could get used to this. Belly, stop you from joining in the fun? Come and help us carry the float! Oh, 
well, well, well. To see the day that Dawn's promise would ride our boat again. <laughs> We've not had the honor since you were here, Gulun Jaja. Right. We've enough bearers now. Onwards to Kozanuaki! Watch well, for you are about to bear witness to the true glory of Ihihana! The float draws upon our life force, concentrating and amplifying the energy. Shaihi then receives that energy and expels it in a great burst, where it showers down upon the land to replenish its vital currents. a literal charm. The float really was helping the reeds. That was amazing! To think that such a thing was even possible! Some of them still look a bit sickly. I imagine even the harvest magic has its limits. If the Hanu continue their festival tradition year after year, though, the entire field should eventually recover. Where does that leave us with the feet, then? You've got nothing to fear on that account. Our situation could never have resolved itself. The revival of even a single reed would have served to demonstrate your commitment to the task. That you recognized the nature of the float and found a near-perfect solution in Ihihana proves your dedication. 
What's more, I don't think I've seen the festival produce such impressive results since I was a mere chirper. Ah, we have been lax in maintaining the float, diluting its magic and reducing Ihihana to hollow theater. I was delayed by an unpleasant encounter, but it seems I arrived at a good time. Isn't that wonderful? What? You just pour in some mystery liquid and problem solved? Stagnant ether was to blame for the reed's poor condition. I assumed that was an alchemical concoction which enhances ethereal conductivity. It utilized the flowing water as an ethereal current, thereby promoting the transfer of life energies. A method I could not have devised without the education I received at the Studium and the cooperation of my Archon allies. Archon allies? You see, Lamachi, this is why we need to embrace foreign knowledge and technology. Employed appropriately, they make light work of what would otherwise be arduous labor. There's no need to lug around heavy floats. Well, you always were the clever one, brother. Your approach was no less effective, Wuklamart. It achieved the same result. Indeed it did. And you enjoyed the festival, yes? I did! It was so much fun! Having visited your village before, I thought I knew everything about it. As it turns out, I knew very little. About the reeds, about Ihihana. With all I've learned this time, I feel as though I've really come to know the Hanu. And I like you even more now than I did before. The feeling is mutual. And it's not just you who had a lot to learn either. I'll never look at our float the same way again. The two of you have exceeded expectations. Come forth and claim your stones. So this is what they look like. Go on, set it in the tablet. A perfect fit. That leaves six more. And on to the next. Not even a moment of celebration. That's Kona for you. A third promise? You must join us for Ikikana next season. As Dawn Servant, of course. Right. It's back to Tulihiola for now. 
Thank you for having us. I look forward to seeing you all again. <laughs> These are interesting times indeed. The concoction was brought by Kona himself. It's a test vial, but it should contain the same reagents. Good work. We'll use whatever we must to win. For win we must. <laughs> 